everyone to our, can you hear me? Okay. Okay, everyone, if you would please start taking your seats. I want to welcome everyone to our special meeting, our budget work uh, budget meeting. Uh, the time now is 7.09. Uh, let's see here. The first item on the agenda is RFP for Utility Independent Study Firm. Mr. Phelps, welcome, sir. Is it on? Okay. Good evening. Um, I just wanted to uh, present this particular agenda item, uh, this request for proposal for utility independent study. After a discussion with uh, Councilman Members Thompson and um, Wiest, uh, we, we kind of came to the conclusion that, that, that it might be a good idea to go out and, and actually uh, uh, put out requests for proposals. That means when we put out and we advertise out that, that, that these uh, consulting firms that um, investigate and test and evaluate water systems from the meter through the whole billing system, that uh, that might be a good idea for us to do. And so uh, this way, it's you know it's an independent, objective firm doing that. So we would we would uh, ask that the council consider that. Uh, and then and then I'm here to answer some questions and make some clarifications. You know, whenever you guys are ready. Thank you, Mr. Phelps. Uh, Councilmember Weiss, did you have a question or comment? I did. Thank you, Rex, for uh, introducing this. Can you go over the process for the RFP, how how it's going to be placed out there, and how we're going to go through all that? We'll advertise it uh, for requests for proposal out to different you know publications as far as uh, the, the, they monitor these things for the municipalities. The other thing is is that we'll we'll monitor that, see how many are coming in. We'll we will send the RFP uh, to d different companies that, that do this kind of things, and uh, we'll see what the, you know, what the cost would be, and we'll bring that back. The list of people that responded or companies that responded, and we'll bring that back to the council, and uh, you can go over those, uh, for lack of a better term, bids or requests for proposals. Yeah. Anything else, Councilmember Weist? No. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Mayor Pro Tem, Dr. Trung. You know, most from up Fathom, the people complain about water rate. Mm -hmm. And uh, the meter so far, I went to the uh, in front Ace uh, hardware store and I talked to people, stopped by, and I have never heard anybody have a problem with them. It might be. But uh, when I went uh, to Senior Season Center, many people approached me and say, we have a problem with water bill because your guy, Somebody told him. I uh, don't want to tell the name, but he clearly told me that your guy raised the water bill to create a revenue for a city. And I told him that's not true. And now is this opportunity for you to explain to people, are we raising the bill to make money for a city at all? No, sir. No, sir. And, and, and Fathom does not get paid any more whether the meter uh, uh, measures 300 gallons or 30,000 gallons. It's a flat rate they get per account per month. The, uh, the other thing is, is all we're doing is, and I don't want to use the word recover because people think that we're trying to recover past revenues, and that's not true. We're just trying to stop the bleed of the water that's used but is not being, that was not being captured by the old meters. And so that's the only thing we're doing is stopping the bleed. The uh, interesting thing is is that uh, since we're talking about this real quickly now, I wanted, I, we need some months of having these meters in the ground, but we do believe that the, the majority of the loss was because of old meters that weren't working correctly. We looked at the month of uh, uh, June, for example, and not all the meters in the ground in June. We still had uh, quite a few uh, to replace. And we bought 169, or almost 168 billion gallons in in uh, June from uh, Fort Worth, and and then we we uh, we put in how much was billed, and for the first time, it's it's getting it's getting closer. Uh, we went from uh, losing five million gallons where we'd have lost a whole lot more if it wouldn't have been for the new meter. So it's working, and that delta that delta stays true and we want to be careful for this because you know water usage goes up and down with years 
uh, and rains have effect on it and all that kind of thing. But uh, we, we would be on target to uh, be, as far as the loss, we were at 192 million gallons last year. And if the Delta holds true, and I really uh, even hesitate to put this out because we need more months to, but, but I wanted people to know, but all indication is, is that the, the, the meters were the problem because if that Delta stayed true for 12 months out of the year, we would have already captured about 130 million gallons uh, that were not previously captured by the old meter system. So um, I'm just saying all indications is, is that that's working. The other thing is, is in 2016, the city had, uh, the citizens paid $381,000 in late fees. 2017, they paid $356,000 in late fees. 2018, they've only paid $90,000 in late fees thus far, estimated 120000 And the reason I say this is because it's exactly working like it was designed to work. Uh, we were doing 300 plus cutoffs uh, on cutoff day uh, every before Fathom came along, and now we're down to around 150 to 160. And the reason I'm saying that is because we don't want people's water to be cut off, and a lot of that has to do with the notification system that they had in their billing platform that we just didn't have or couldn't do. Now. So a couple of other things that came up from, from last time that I just wanted to hit on, and I, I won't, you know, stay up here too long because I know that uh, citizens can get frustrated when, 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 when you're uh, giving these explanations, but that's all they are is explanations. Uh, city, uh, Fathom employees are not driving city vehicles. Now, I can understand how somebody may confuse that, but that's not happening. City facilities are metered. We'll make sure that that's, we're not counting the water loss for city facilities. They are metered. That was not part of the water loss. Um, the, uh, the Fathom contract, I would like, if I could, w there's a, there was a couple of uh, 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 release of information uh, that, that, that people wanted the contract. And so we're working on that, but there's a, there's a, uh, uh, a process for that. And I'd like for the city attorney to explain that. Sure. Um, we've gotten a couple, the city's gotten a couple of requests for the Fathom contract. The city has sent those to the Texas Attorney General's office because there's a legal procedure. The city has not raised any exceptions to disclosure, has not asked the Attorney General's office to withhold that contract on behalf of the city, but the city has to send it to the AG and notify the third party, in this case Fathom, that it was requested just in case Fathom wants to make arguments directly to the Attorney General's office about there being anything confidential or proprietary in the contract. We have no knowledge of whether they will. They may just stay silent on the issue, in which case the contract gets released. But that's what happens with every request for a city contract in general, is that we send it to the AG, the city takes no position on it, We'd rather release it, but we have to tell that third party that it's been requested because that's required by law. So that's just part of the process. Okay. Hopefully Thank that clears you. that up. Thank you. Uh, so are there any questions? Okay. When, when you have the independent inspector or uh, firm to investigate about the meter, right? Right. Are you do randomly or just take the whole street to find out is the meter how many meters bad, how many over reading or something, because if there is a lot of problem with Fathom, you know, council will reconsider the contract sure, with sure, it. Sure, and, and, and you know, we, we're always open and objective. If, if, if they find out any issues, we'll certainly uh, have that report for the council, and then that would put us in a stronger position, uh, you know, a legal position if in, in the event that we wanted to get out of a contract, that would actually help us. Uh, you know, you know, I, I want to be very careful here because we serve our citizens and we work for them. And a lot of this we've looked into and we've investigated. And uh, I, I, I'm not sitting here telling you that people are not being truthful, but I do think there's a lot of confusion. I think there's a lot of uh, uh, mistakes because we look into all these uh, complaints. And, and, and I'm just saying that what we're finding is, is that it, the information that, we're getting is not accurate and uh, the other thing is is that if there is something uh, there's an anomaly there's usually a reasonable explanation for it but uh, you know we have you know we can have examples and and those kind of things but uh, what we what we decided to do was instead of trying to defend this thing 
um, let's just let's just put out a uh, an RFP and get it investigated from an independent, objective third party. And we felt like that was the best thing to do after consultation with the council members that I just mentioned. And as far as how long it will take, well, you know, usually, I mean, I, an RFP process can take a matter of a, you know, a, a month or two to get the, all the uh, requests in, or, you know, the proposals in and then brought back to council, uh, you know, and put a place on an agenda for you guys to decide. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Dr. Strong. Uh, council Member Thompson. Thank you, Mayor. Mr. Phelps, would you explain the process in which the city handled the contract, uh, exactly what you did and how that was handled? Well, there, there were many hours in that contract uh, that we spent making sure that there were, you know, clauses and protection for the city. To everything that had to do from customer service to, uh, uh, you know, to to getting out of that contract if we needed to. Uh, we, we met, I know that we were, uh, one night we were up here till midnight uh, or almost midnight with the Fathom people. I think that, I mean, they said many times that we, we, we probably looked at that contract longer than anybody they've ever had. They agreed to some things that I don't think that they would agree with or have agreed with with other cities, not because they wouldn't, but because I don't know that the other cities put them through what we did. So I just, I felt like that we were very thorough. And then of course we had our uh, uh, city attorney's uh, firm look at it, go over it with a fine tooth comb. And, and then that's, you know, it's kind of where we are. And then we brought it in front of the council and, and you guys asked questions about it as well. And we had workshops and public hearings and things like that. So. so it wasn't just something that somebody brought down a piece of paper and said, oh, this is your contract by the way, and handed it over. Absolutely not. The other question I have on your RFPs, what kind of um, qualifications will we be looking for from these companies? Well, obviously, we, we would want them to be a company that could do all of it. You know, that could, could, uh, they're not just specialty on meters, but they're specialty with looking at billing software. They know how to, uh, the processes, all the best practices, the calculations from the, the moment that it reads from the ground until the, the customer gets the bill. And um, so we want we want a company that can do all of that, you know, because we're not piecemeal, but but a company that can come in and study companies that study water rates, do impact studies, uh, those kinds of things. So it, it, it's it's going to be a, a company that a consulting firm that for muni spe uh, specializes in municipal water systems. And just to reiterate, the meters they will be tested for accuracy as well. Yes, uh, and you know these firms. I mean, they'll they'll tell you the methodology and explain the methodology. That I'm sure they'll have a cross section or sample. Uh, there'll be some random testing. There'll probably be some direct testing, uh, that kind of thing. As far as you know, how many meters that they're going to send off, you know, that's something I don't know. But but those companies, they understand that methodology of testing better than we do. As a matter of fact, that's why we we agreed with uh, you and Councilman Weiss that. Um, you know, the, the, we're not sitting here telling you we're the professionals uh, of, of knowing smart meter and smart meter systems and the billing platform. So let's go out and have a third party look at it so that we're not taking Fathom's word for it. Right. And Fathom will have nothing to do with this, correct? That's correct. Okay. So in my opinion, that will either validate or disqualify Fathom one way or the other, correct? One way or the other. Thank you. Thank you, Councilmember Thompson. Uh, Councilmember Nunn. Thank you. Um, as far as the RFP process, can we go through that just a little bit? Um, time frame uh, to send them out. How long? How long will that? Take? Well, we will. Uh, we will get on that if, if this council approves us to, to go out for the RFPs. We will put that out as, as quickly as possible. Hopefully, within within a week's time, have something out that we can advertise. Okay. And then we'll just start gathering the requests, I mean, the proposals, and they'll tell us what their charges is, and we'll, we'll go over the scope. And the scope's going to be everything from the meter in the ground to when the customers get the bill, the calculations, any, the well, transference the of RFP. data, everything. Right, because right. that's going to be in the RFP, so they know what they need to, that's right. to provide that's us. Right. So um, what, kind of, what kind of time frame are you giving them to return that to us? Well, you know, 
we're, to some degree, because we're going out for an RFP, we're going to we're going to be, and that's one of the things we're going to ask them to tell us what is the time frame that they're going to need, because we're going to give them the specs, like the size of our city, how many meters are in the ground, uh, some of the kind of things that they will want to know, and then they can call for questions, and they'll put the RFP together, and uh, and so some of that we'll, we'll have to come back and report to you exactly what they're going to. We didn't want this to be like, and I'm going to tell you guys. This was on purpose and by design. We did not go out and call anybody. We don't want, we're not trying to choose. You know, there, there's things cities can do if it's professional services. We can go out and contract with them. We didn't want that. We're going out for an RFP on purpose because we want this to be as objective as possible. And so that, so that you know, I didn't go handpick these. The city manager didn't handpick these. The council person didn't handpick these. Our public works director didn't. We're putting an RFP. And, and asking for uh, uh, for these firms to come in here and bid on objectively looking at our, our billing system and our meter system. Okay, so what is your best guesstimate as to the time frame that we would even get, be able to um, decide on the company? Greg, what, what, what are you thinking as far as time frame? What I typically like to do is give them at least 15 days on something like this. So if we were able to get out an RFP by next Monday, probably couldn't get it in the paper till next Wednesday. So t two weeks from the from that Wednesday to have RFPs back. And at that point, you know, every RFP is going to be different. I like to go over to analyze it, maybe make a spreadsheet. What this one's offering, what this one's offering. And my suggestion might be to, to look at that before we decide on a firm and then dis discuss price. And who's involved in that process? I'm going to imagine that's going to be Rex, myself, and Sedana, and, and David, and Mr. Lane, if you'd like. Okay. And then also, um, as far as an <coughs> audit of this type, I mean, I'm sure that we've probably looked at other cities that might have had something like this done. How long does something like that normally take? Any idea? Well, I, I think to do it right, they're going to need probably, I would say once they get awarded, they're probably going to need a matter of, because uh, they've got to send the stuff off to be tested and that kind of thing. How, lo how long does it usually take to send meters off and get them tested? I mean, it, So, so if there's multiple ones, if they're doing a lot, with the, well, but I'm just saying it probably we probably have to give them a good. I'm saying 30 to 60 days to go through the whole system and test it. And of course, this is not hearing back from them, so I'm just. And then they have to do their report. That's right. right. So. I mean, we want it to be thorough. So we're looking at three months. I would say that's as good as guest as any. I, I wish I could tell you more, but uh, I, I more more accurate. Everybody would be interested in that. Sure. You know, as far sure. as the time frame and how how when can we expect the result? If we decide to do this, you know, to vote on this, when can we expect some real answers? Right. And, and, and we and we will also keep you notified on that. We will we will tell you from the start, um, you know, what they're saying, and uh, we'll keep you posted. You know, once we make a decision, who, who's going to get that? And that would be one of the one of the things you might look at if this company tells you six months and this other company is just as reputable tells you three months or two months then you know that's something you can consider okay and have you done any research or talked to any companies that do this just to kind of get an idea of what i, I did expectations I, are from I've, us? I've looked online just to make sure that there are companies out there that do this and you know i have found some at least that uh, uh, report uh, purport themselves to be doing this kind of thing so right. i think they're out there I do. Um, so, you know, we'll just have to go from there. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Council Member Nunn. Uh, Council Member Watkins. <clears throat> will, that, will they also be checking the software? Is, yes, sir. Because I think uh, maybe not so much, <clears throat> excuse me, looking here, but looking like at uh, Copper's Cove or someplace where they right. Speaking of that, would you address, uh, there's a lot of conversation on the street about several of these cities that have canceled their contract. And um, so if you'll address that, but I want to make sure the software, because I, I think that's a part of some of these, if you go out there and they had not got a leak, 
mm-hmm. and there's and everything else seems like it's all right. right. Well, it uh, it almost have to be off, off someplace off site. Right. Um, and as far as uh, some of the other cities, you know, I've called and I've talked to them. I've got testimonials in my book over there that uh, Carpus Cove they're still with Fathom. Uh, they said like like really what I found out is that every city, especially one that waited as long as we have. Uh, to replace their water meter system have gone through this and it, whether it was a fathom company or the city that did it themselves it's just been an issue during especially during the transition and the migration and uh, you know there's been changes in the way the way bills look there's been changes in the building system itself and so that you know that just inherently causes some issues and problems but uh, they're saying now that their relationship with them is good and uh, and they've done what they said they were going to do well, Kennedale's situation was different. Um, if my understanding, when I called them, they said that, that I talked to their water billing supervisor and said that their issues were, I'm just telling you what they told me, was not Fathom's fault. They had some problem with uh, 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 city management that did not run this by a council, a council and nor, nor did I believe they run it by the city attorney and, and signed, and that would never happen here. Uh, I, I, I can tell you right now that... Uh, Keith Lane or I would never, never do that. Does that answer your questions, Councilmember Watkins? Okay, thank you, sir. Uh, Councilmember Grove. Um, and how many companies do you think, I guess in your cursory searching, how many companies have you found that are out there that would? Well, there's a lot of companies, but there's a, but they do specific things. And I'm trying to find a consulting firm or we want to find a consulting firm that can come in and look at it all. And so I found several of them out there and they're, you know, they're uh, many of them out of state, but they'll still come in and do the, and, okay. and do the study. But I'm hoping that we will have uh, uh, people, you know, firms that would, would answer that RFP and put in a good proposal for us. Uh, I, we, you know, we just talked about it. We're just trying to find a objective third party that will come in. And so we figured we'll try this out because, you know, sometimes we understand, that, you know, people. And, you know, it's not just the citizens that are that are having the anxiety about it. I live here, too. And, and I want to know. I want to know what the problems are, not just the 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 ones that we can get to and look at and, and investigate. But I, I, I want to see the whole system. The other thing is we might be able to test a meter. But, you know, we want to make sure that the calculations from the meter to the billing is all done properly and, and the best practices are there. Uh, you know, I've heard issues like could there be rounding problems and things like that. Well, you know, I, don't, I, I think that it's okay, but I don't want to tell the citizens that I think that we're good. You know, I, I, I like you guys. I mean, you guys want to know the truth. I do too. And we just want to, we want to put some, some other eyes on this that's not us and it's not Fathom. And we're not planning on directing um, whichever firm that we uh, get for the RFP to, you know, direct them on their methodology. Absolutely not. Okay. And and they'll explain their methodology, but it'll be their methodology, not ours. And uh, you know, we're, we're we just we want to pay them to come tell us the truth, and and you know, and whatever fi- problems they find, we want to know about it. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Councilmember Grow. Are there any other questions or comments from the council for our assistant city manager? Seeing none, this is posted as an action item, so we are online for a motion. Councilmember Weist. Make a motion that we approve the RFP for the utility independent study. Thank you, sir. A motion for approval. Uh, Councilmember Thompson. Thank you, Mayor. That would be for a second. Thank you, ma'am. We're motion for approval in a second. Are there any other questions or comments from the council? Seeing none, if you would please signify your votes. Motion passes unanimously. Thank you, council, and thank you, Mr. Phelps. Thank you. Moving right along to agenda item number two, our tax rate. Conduct a public hearing regarding the proposed fiscal year 2018-19 property tax rate. Ms. Fung, welcome. Mayor and the City Council, um, before we go to the item, I would like to show you the presentation again uh, so as to kind of remind you what we are, uh, what are the numbers are.
Okay, as you know that the property tax um, rate currently is at six, uh, 66 cents A1A, 66 A1A. And also we're lucky the city has increased uh, in, the, um, in the property value <laughs> from $1.96 billion to $2.145 billion. So if we, there are four rates here. The first one is using the same rate, which is the 66 cents A18. And because of the change in the uh, debt service and the general fund, that is the MNO and INS rate, so we need to keep the debt service rate by calculation is 0.23586, that is about 23 and a half cents. And if we are using the same rate, that is to say general fund will have about uh, 43 cents for um, using the same tax rate. The rate that we uh, advertise on the newspaper is the highest rate that is called the rollback rate, which is 0.68926. And again, the that service rate is 0.23586. That will leave general fund uh, of 0.4534. And another rate that we can look at is what I call it the adjusted effective rate, which is to say we are going to get general fund the same amount of revenue, except that we have to follow the new debt service rate that would give us um, the total of 0.65568. This basically will give you the same amount of revenue in order to provide the same um, service. And then another rate is called the effective tax rate. This is, this is the rate that total, the total tax will give you the same amount of revenue as the current year. So, by using that, you can see that if we look at the three different rates, um, for the current year, we have total revenue from the public tax of 66 A, uh, 66 A1A will give you about $12.8 million. Using the same rate for next year, since the assessed value increase, it will generate about $13.97 million. So the increase is 9.1%. That is um, the increase of about $1.1 million. Okay, the few rates that I explained earlier, the rollback rate, which is the highest, that will generate about $14.4 million of revenue. If we use the adjusted effective tax rate, that will give you about $13.7 million. And if we follow the effective tax rate, that will give you $12.8 million. So it's a lot of numbers here, but um, as I have mentioned before, we published the rollback rate, and our budget right now is using the adjust, adjusted effective uh, rate and then um, the real effective tax rate will be 0.61656. Okay, um, what we need to do here is that the budget process for Lomo City, I think Harlem is a kind of Lomo too, right? So um, the city council is supposed to set the tax rate and then um, First, the budget process is to set the goal. What are we trying to accomplish for the next year? And with that said, then the city manager allocated resources to accomplish the goals that the council set, and that will establish our budget. And then using the amount of resources that we need is to use the number to set the tax rate. Okay. Um, Today is the first public hearing for the tax rate, and the next public hearing for the tax rate is next Monday, August 27th. And the adoption, rate, uh, adoption date is September 10th. 
And then on the other side, we have the budget ordinance as well. And the first reading of the budget ordinance is August 27, and the second reading and adoption date is also on September 10th. So with that said, I would say that um, we already published the rate that is the highest. Again, what we have published is not necessarily the rate that is, will be adopted by the city, but that is the highest you can, um, you, uh, the city council can uh, adopt. So with that said, so Thank any you, questions? Thank you, Ms. Tong. Are there any, uh, Mayor Pro Tem, Dr. Trung? Okay, I want the public to know right now we are short 18 position in uh, public work, right? Craig, is that an up-to-date number? Kind of changes. 19 after the day. 19. Last time we were 18, now 19. The reason they uh, reason they left our city why? Low pay, not because you are not good boss or what? Tell me. That's not what they've told me. But for the most part, from what I'm hearing is other cities are paying much higher salaries than our city. Okay. This is just one department. If we keep the same rate, even we got like uh, one point some million dollar more, but the cost of living is maybe long way higher than that. So, if you want to bring back. 18 or high 18 more, we have to increase the tax, right, Greg? Ms. Lynn? Not necessarily. I mean, it just depends on what you want to do. Well, you have to give them, okay, right now you let's maybe pay the highest one. Mm -hmm. We need to keep the people working for, for our city. Sure. We don't want to go back like five years ago, Hotham City is the training academy. We bring the people here, we train them. Later on, somebody have pay a little bit higher than they move to a different place. My opinion, I think council and uh, citizen here, we need to uh, figure out the number. I don't think the six, 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 eight, like last year, we go uh, comparable with the other city because right now, I couldn't believe just one year we lost 19 people. If this situation keep going next year. When you call somebody, say, hey, my street have a pothole or anything like this, nobody can come there on time or nobody can do service for you, include the public, you know, like police and fire department. And uh, I, I wish the council will adopt a little bit higher. That's my personal opinion. I just have one vote. I can speak for everybody. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Dr. Trong. Uh, Council Member uh, Nunn. Thank you. Um, the 18, 19 people that you, that uh, we don't have in uh, public works right now, aren't we budgeted for that though? I mean, for those positions, they're in the budget. All right, so it's not like we're adding to the budget for those. What we're concerned about possibly is the pay structure. Okay, personally, I know I've had the same issue in wh wherever I used to work. And we went from 12.50 to 15. Didn't help. I mean, I, I, don't know, I don't know what works. It didn't help. And it didn't help retain anybody. You know, if they wanted to work there and they enjoyed their job, they stayed there. Um, I don't know the answer. You know, it, it's a very difficult situation out there to hire good qualified people that want to stay with what they're doing, that are qualified to do the job and want to do the job and want to wake up in the morning and come to work. It's, it's, it's facing our nation everywhere. Um, I'm, I'm not of the opinion that um, always increasing salaries makes satisfied workers. Um, it, and that's my experience, but I have a lot of experience in, in that realm. So. Um, just my opinion, I, I think there has to be a solution. I feel for you. I feel for the other positions that we, that we are lacking. Um, I see you guys out there working. I call the compliments, great team. 
um, I, I just don't always feel it's in salary increases, um, my opinion. Thank you, Council Member Nunn. Uh, Council Member Thompson. Thank you, Mayor. I agree somewhat with Ms. Nunn, but the real issue is, and it's my understanding, we were at $13 and some odd cents an hour. And the most of the other cities are there around $16, $17 an hour. Is that? What is, what is the range there? Um, most of the cities are above Haltom City. Uh, Watauga is over $14. Keller is over 14 closer to 15 The city of Euless really is the, the front runner. They start out their lowest level uh, worker at $16.90. And according to their budget, they're going to increase that 2.5% for the upcoming fiscal year. Okay. Uh, in respect to you uh, handling the applications or the applicants as well, what do you see as somewhat of a way that we could kind of fix this, so to speak? What would be your suggestion? Well, I think that uh, Councilwoman Nunn was correct in that this is not just a Haltom City issue. Um, because all over the country people are having the same shortage. I think our problem is exacerbated because we're in a metroplex where there are so many employers and so it really kind of puts us behind the eight ball in recruiting employees. A lot of the candidates that we get, um, some of them have had, like I looked at one today, that had had six jobs in four years. And so when you start hiring candidates like that, you're not really getting somebody for the long run. You're getting somebody that might stay five, six months if they're lucky. Uh, and then they're looking and they're chasing the dollar. And so those people would leave for the money. But um, I would say probably less than 50% are going to stay because they really enjoy the work. Um, I think some of the issues that we're having right now in the Public Works Department is that they are so critically understaffed that the employees are exhausted. Uh, this has happened during the summer months, and so you know, when they're having to work outside when the temperature is well over 100 degrees for more than 30, 30 days, it is physically and mentally exhausting. And I think that is, um, is just making the situation worse. And I, I may not be talking to the right person here. Would it be um, as an option maybe to have contracts for emergency situations and or our capital projects? Would that be a way to kind of help this situation? I think that would be a good question for Greg to answer, but we have talked about the fact that with the number of vacancies that they currently have, they really are getting to critical mass and they're going to be at a point where they won't be able to accomplish their job duties. Um, but I would like to correct, Greg was on vacation last week. We hired two employees last week, but then he got another resignation today. So we're actually, we have 17 vacancies in public works. Thank you. I have one more question. I'm sorry, Tony. Okay, because I was faced with about 50% turnover. Mm -hmm. um, out of the ones that you hire and that go through training, how many stay for more than three months? Approximately. Stay for more than three months? Mm -hmm. uh, in the past six months, I would say probably 60%, 50%, but we've had, I mean, we hired somebody in June and he was gone the first day of August. Mm. Okay. So it really just depends. And the person that, that I'm talking about left because he went to the city of Colleville for more money. Mm -hmm. Now in his situation, it was a little bit closer to his home. He lived in Grapevine, but you know, that's, you know, the cost of gas coming to Haltom City along with the salary and then the cost for benefits because this particular employee actually had family coverage and so he's forking out almost $600 a month in insurance and then when you take into account that he has makes $13.80 an hour that's a huge drain um, on the pocketbook. I, I thought their insurance was free for the 
It is free for the employee, employee. but he covers uh, a lot of people His cover family. their family, okay. and the family coverage, the employee rate, is currently just under six hundred dollars a month. Okay. Well, to me, the benefits of working for the city are extraordinary. I mean, you know, I think they're wonderful benefits. Do they not pay that? At, they're just looking after the dollar, right, and not the benefit package. The benefits of working at the city. Um, are most realized when you've worked here for a long time. Mm -hmm. And getting people to that point has become a challenge. Uh, we've had some supervisors leave in the public works departments and uh, Greg is in the process of filling those positions. Um, a number of employees have left um, recently because they followed another supervisor. So I mean, you know, certainly the money is an issue and when you've worked with somebody and that supervisor leaves and they can offer you maybe five, six dollars an hour more, yes, you're going to leave. Mm -hmm. um, but then we have the, the pretty good group of people that have been here. Um, but then we have some people that we hire them and they're chasing the dollar. And in fact, they chase 50 cents an hour. Okay, I understand. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Council Member Nine. Uh, Council Member Bro. Um, going along with Councilwoman uh, Thompson, uh, this might be an opportunity that we start looking at staff AUG because, you know, with all the construction that's going on along in the Metroplex, it's not just cities that we're competing against, we're competing against every construction company in in the 27 county area and so um you might have to you know i hate this term but think outside the box but start looking at staff fog because that's what you know i work in uh it so that's a, a primary source of getting skills in that you don't have on staff to work on projects right and that's one of the things that we did discuss so it might be something that we have to start looking at oh, thank you ma'am thank you sir are there any other Ms. Nunn, did you still have a question? Um, no, I have one for Greg. <laughs> so what do you think about uh, his, um, what's your name? Walter. <laughs> Walter. Walter's <laughs> suggestion. I mean, have you, have you participated in this type of third-party service before? Personnel agency, we have, basically. Tony and I have discussed a variety of things, changing the work week, you know, making it more desirable. To work here we've started to offer some training to increase their skills in other areas and uh, while I have considered hiring outside firms and we did that earlier this year when we had a uh, sanitary sewer manhole um, collapse uh, right next to Denton Highway under Browning Boulevard the cost to hire outside is a lot more expensive than having employees on our own payroll and but i think we're getting to the point where that's something we are obviously going to have to look at have some contractors on standby similar to what we do with our annual concrete you know contract because we are at you know we're at a critical point where we've lost enough equipment operators that you know we're down to just a handful or more Thank you, Councilmember Dunn. Thank you, Greg, and uh, thank you, Tony, as well. Are there any other questions or comments before we open up uh, the public hearing? Councilmember Dunn, did you have another question? Okay. Yes, I'm, I'd like to talk a little bit about the um, the budget, the increases, the okay. um, the tax rates. You know, we have gone up. If we go up to 9.1 percent, which um, staff is suggesting. We'll have gone up 30.3% in five years. That's a lot for our citizens to absorb. I mean, right now we have, you know, within the last well, few months, but you know, really, we've realized this last, this last month um, of the intense issues that are going on with, um, and I don't know about the water, you know, I don't know what's going on with that. I, I really don't, I really care about it. But what we do know is almost everybody here has been faced with increased water, and it's going to increase again, and it it has to because it's coming. We we are, as as we've said, you know, Fort Worth bills us, we in turn build, build you guys. But everybody has had an increase going to Fathom, whether it's been a more efficient system, you know, and it and it is definitely you know taking the water use that we have. I don't know. That's what we're going to find out. But it has 
it has been a burden. So I'm, I'm very conservative and I have very conservative values. Um, one thing I, I'm just, I take um, the responsibility of being a representative of the citizens very seriously. Um, two things I believe is um, you cannot tax yourself into prosperity and you cannot borrow yourself out of debt. For somebody to, to get money, somebody else has to give it up. So we as a city get money, citizens are having to give it up. Um, a lot of citizens here are struggling to make ends meet. I don't know if y'all's neighborhoods are like mine. There are four or five families living together just, just to have a home over their head. Um, uh, you know, our citizens have to work hard. It'd be real easy, you know, just for us to sit up here. We vote to raise increases, you know, 9.1% this year, if that's the way we go with staff. Um, but again, um, and then the city gets it and we spend our money on our wish list of, you know, the what's wanted in the budget. It's a wish list. Um, but I, I just I, I just don't feel comfortable with raising the rate. I'm, I'm an effective tax rate person. I think we can do it with the effective tax rate. Our, as everybody saw, our valuations are going up. You know, that's, you know, that's increasing. We're getting more money because of valuations there. Um, tax, tax, tax rate's going up. Um, not tax rate, but I mean um, our revenue from our sales taxes is going up. You know, President Trump, what did he do? He lowered taxes. We had more exp expendable in income. You know, it worked. Um, Keller, our neighboring city, they've decreased their taxes for the last five years. This year they're gonna go below the effective tax rate. Um, I mean, I realize Ricky Brown's not here tonight. He's a proponent of the effective tax rate. Um, and uh, I realize that I'm not, I'm gonna be in the minority on this. I know that, um, but I have to go with my convictions. Um, I am the majority, I'm the majority on this council because most of us here, our taxes are frozen. We're 66 and over. You know, what, what we decide doesn't affect us, it affects the citizens. And so um, I'm just, you know, I'm just gonna be out there. I am, I'm definitely an effective tax rate um, supporter for 2019. I did, last year we kind of did a middle of the road vote, you know, because I felt that was about the only thing we could do. Um, but um, I do believe with physical sound judgment from our management and from our staff, we can do what we need to do. We can, um, uh, the tax rate will give this government a good operating budget. It has to be done very with fabulous sound judgment and perfect decisions. So I realize everybody's wanting a 3% raise. Like I said, I'd love to give you all a 5% raise. Everybody does a fabulous job, fabulous job. I see more hardworking people going to that refresh last Saturday, going to the animal shelter, you know, being involved in different things in the community. Everybody gives over 100%. I love it. Um, we can't always do it. We can't, you know, we have a wish list on budget items. We can't always do it. It's just like your budget or my budget. If I have extra money, I either decide, okay, do I put it in, in savings? Do I buy a big screen TV? Do I buy a new car? Or do I do what I need to do? Work on, you know, work on household projects or something like that. So it's, it's with the city, it's with everybody, it's with each of us. Um, I just wanted to, that's my, um, the way I feel, it's my belief, it's my conviction and um, unless y'all can really do a good job of convincing me otherwise, that's where I stand. Thank you. Very good points, Councilmember uh, Nunn. Uh, Dr. Trung. Uh, Man, Council, when you say they uh, cut tax, everybody love it, include me. 
But the main thing, if you feel like you're satisfied with hot on CD with effective rate, our CD will be looked like this for the next five, ten years. Then vote for that. I don't believe so. How many of you remodel your house? How many of you buy a new car? If you satisfy with 1963 vehicle, then don't buy a brand new car. If you want to bring more investor here, you need to make a city look better. When I vote, when I hit button, approve for my vote, higher tax rate, I vote for myself. I never look back to around me because I have no apartment, I have no land to investment. So only one tax I have to pay in my house. The reason I say this, because I hope citizens out there <coughs> try to make our city look better, please. And if you satisfy with this, I have no other comment, except you know your effective rate, keep it. Then you will look at our city idle. And if our city don't make any money, how the future would be? Would be the same thing. I bet you more people will quick job in Harlem City looking for some play out because effective rate never work. Not too low. And I hope it won't happen. Uh, that's my personal comment. I, uh, I hope a lot of people you know, don't get mad with me when I do this, but uh, I just speak from my heart. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Strong. Uh, Council Member uh, Thompson. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I'd like to ask Ms. Fung a question. And I understand that the budget we have been presented has been reduced and it's very streamlined. Based on the budget that is projected, what should our rate be to cover that which covers the employees' raises and things of that nature. Okay, we have few rates here. If we are adopting the adjusted effective rate, that will be able, we will be able to cover what is um, proposed by the city manager. Okay, at point six five five point six five five six eight. That is that we are not increasing money for the general fund at all. But with the savings from the current year, we'll be able to cover the increase as well as the decision package that is submitted by the departments and approved by the city manager. Right, so if we do not approve the point six five five six eight, that would not give us the right. two police officers? No, if we do not adopt this way, at least this way, then we have to cut. Right. If we do not adopt a way with 0.65568, we have to cut our budget in order to make things work. And on that budget, we were uh, allowing for two new police officers, three yes. two uh, firemen, two firemen, two firemen, and two. a new fire truck that we needed because yes. it was the one that we have is needed to be retired, right. correct? Yes. So we're not talking about just a lot needless of things. things. No, right. these, are these, need are, these are critical items that we need and we will be having our population to increase. So around 2,000 to 2,500 people, just roughly, and I could be wrong, but just say that with the <laughs> apartments coming in, and with the new that housing. One, that one is not counted yet because it's right. not in the tax roll yet. Right, I understand that, but what I'm saying is we've got to be prepared for these people. It takes a police officer, if, and I could be mistaken, from the time they apply to the time that they go through training mm -hmm. and they go through um, the field training okay. with an officer, it's a year and a half. I think that is what the police chief said, but I may not, you know. Ms. Lee, 
Yes. I, I think okay. it takes That's more than a year. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. A year and a half is what right, huh? I believe I've been told. And right. as I said, I'm not trying to be right down on that. And for our firemen, yes. what kind of time does it take from the time we get a fireman who's an applicant to the point that he is self-sufficient and being um, no longer a rookie, but he's really a qualified fireman. Councilman, uh, we have a one-year probation, uh, and that, that's that process, getting them ready to where they're coming off probation and they're self-sustaining. But we hire firefighter paramedics. So that's right. the difference between us and the police department. They have a very lengthy time frame, and it does take about 14, 15 months, my understanding. Okay, and refresh my memory uh, for the need of the fire truck and the items that were listed, but the fire truck was the main thing that was also included in this budget. Yes, ma'am. And the fire truck we have currently is needing to be replaced, right? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So I want the citizens to understand that if we do go to the effective rate, these items will not happen. And to me, the most important thing that I have run on as council is your safety. And if I cannot supply police, fire, and also public works, then that's what's going to happen when you go to the effective rate because those items will not be there and we will not be effective. And I treasure the people that live in this city. They're very important, along with the employees. So therefore, I do not agree at this time with the effective rate because of the position the city is in. Thank you, Councilmember Nunn. I'm sorry, Councilmember Thompson. Uh, now, Councilmember Nunn. Thank you. Thank you, Lynn. Um, I know these are very important, but we also, how many police officers do we, are we trying to hire right now? We're short how many? Five. Four. So y'all did, y'all did good over at your, okay. So you've got four right now and then firemen, how many are short? Four? Okay. Okay. Um, so not only those four that were in the budget, then we're looking at these these other for next year's budget your four were all already in the budget for this this year right and next year so we're looking at these additional ones um, for next year correct okay um, and the fire truck we just didn't we just get one in service was that correct that we that we purchased last year Yes, Councilman, that one will be here right around September 10th is when it will be here. The one's purchased in February. Right now, the, the manufacturer has a loaner unit here for us to, be, to use in that time frame. Okay. All right. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Hey, Chief, before you go, um, why, do, why do we have to get um, engines back-to-back? Because -back? my understanding is because our replacement um, schedule got out of whack because of the fire that we had with it's, the truck? It's, it's out of whack, yes, sir. Uh, the vehicle that will be replaced will be a 2005 will go to auction and a 2007 will go in reserve. That's when we're going to reserve. Uh, this apparatus will be able to replace that one. Uh, the engine that we purchased in February replaced a 1992 model KME. So we've tried our best to make sure, and there's you know, we've talked about that classical 16 year time frame maintenance costs and stuff like that those drive those decisions too so uh in the budget for the new engine uh that's that's to replace that one yes sir thank you sir thank you go ahead mr weiss and can you just confirm the one that's in the budget now is the one we're currently using but they're giving us a reduced rate because we we currently have in possession yes sir they they brought it to us brand new uh, has very few miles on it, so obviously they're gonna have to sell it for a used price. Uh, that particular unit is about five hundred ten thousand uh, dollars, and the quote they've given us was four hundred nineteen thousand dollars. So uh, it's a much more re 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 much cheaper price. Same engine. Thank you. Thank you, sir. 
Thank you, Councilmember Weist. Are there any other questions or comments from the council? Uh, Councilmember Nunn. Thank you. I'd like to just add one more thing, if I can remember what mm -hmm. I, I just got ink all over my hands, and I've got a white pants, so I'm like, ah. Um, uh, let me think what I was going to say. Well, I can't remember because I'm concerned about my ink. Um, but I'll think of it. Can I talk after the visitor? Absolutely. Forum? Okay. Absolutely. All right. I'll do that later. Okay. <clears throat> uh, Councilmember Weiss, did you have a question or a comment? Just a comment. I was up here crunching numbers using my house as an example. Um, last year, roughly, I paid, I don't mind sharing this, uh, $800 for the taxes for the city. This year, if I stayed at the current rate, I would pay 935 If I went down to the adjusted effective, I would pay about 917 So based on that number, using the 917 for nine dollars and roughly seventy cents a month, um, if we adopted that, we would get two new police officers, we get two firemen, we get a fire truck, we get an animal shelter remodel, we get employees raises, we get the remodel that we need desperately down at the um, uh, rec center as well, plus software upgrades, equipment upgrades that we need. So I know y'all look at the rates and everything, look at it that way. For nine dollars and seventy cents, that's what you're getting. I know that's tough, but that's what I look at. Thank you, sir. Are there any other questions or comments from the council before we open up a public hearing? Seeing none, we'll now open up the public hearing at eight ten for anyone wishing to speak regarding this agenda item. Again, this is agenda item number two: the uh, proposed tax rate for fiscal year two thousand eighteen and nineteen. If anyone wishes to speak regarding this item, if you would just please come up and say, uh, say your name for the record, please. Welcome. Sherry Thompson, thank you. So I'm new at this, but I had a question on one of those slides. Okay. Especially on the animal shelter. So the stripping of the floors was like $30,000. I mean, is, is that what the cost of that was? Uh, yes. Who, yeah, do you... <laughs> Yes, that's the, that's the cost. Yes, ma'am. That's the cost. That is the cost? Yes, ma'am. So I'm, I'm looking at this, and have we ever even thought about, and, and I don't know if it's feasible, forgive me for my ignorance, but is there not a, we couldn't see if people wanted to volunteer to do that sort of stuff, that we could remodel and do that instead of spending that money where we could have that money for officers and firefighters? Does it have to be done that way? I mean, yes, ma'am. I it mean, does? it's yeah, there's a lot that goes into that. There's, you know, we hire a company to come in and do work on a building. They're bonded. In other words, we don't take on the liability of citizens or volunteers getting injured or hurt. Plus, what we're trying to do is we're trying to make sure that it's a professional product that's going to last for a long time. So that's why we, any type of building maintenance, I think we've put off the animal shelter building maintenance chief for three years now we put that off for three years because of other priorities like you said so but we uh, one of the goals that the council has given me is to protect the infrastructure that we have the aging infrastructure so that's one of the ways that we do it agreed but it's just like I would compare it to you know do you want a bunch of your neighbors um, putting in a new street for you or replacing a water line for you it's that's you know that's what we do is we we, we put out a quality product and that's how we ensure that it's done I agree. It took me 20 years to get a water system down on Salona Circle South that we had to fight and come up here and beg City Council to do something with because we're afraid kids were going to drown. It would be waist deep up here. 20 years. And then why it got fixed all of a sudden, <clears throat> I can't tell you why. Right. And I agree with the improvements. I'm just wondering if stainless steel cabinets over wood cabinets, and I don't know the ratio. Is, is it, you know, not that much difference in wooden stainless steel, but I mean, is there something that could be done cheaper to where we could do the officers and firefighters? Like uh, Ms. Thompson said, you know, we do need that. You know, I'm, I'm, not a, um, I'm not against animals or nothing like that. I'm just trying to think of a way that maybe we could have both. So, just, just a thought. Okay. I'd like to add real quickly, uh, and I do appreciate the comments, but 
a lot of times uh, when you talk about uh, saving money for personnel, there's a few different funding sources, and we do try to save money like that any way that we can, but, but personnel is a recurring cost, so it has to come from some revenue source that keeps coming. It's not just a one-time savings. The other things is that a lot of people don't understand in animal shelters, and the only reason I do is because I uh, was over animal shelters for about 17 years of my career, you know, as part of my job, is that uh, a lot of those things are surfaces that have to be done a certain way or have to be certain types of services so that they don't harbor bacteria and things like that. So there's some industry standards there that, that we have to adhere to uh, just for safety reasons and to make sure that it's uh, safe for the animals and the people. Thank you, Mr. Phelps. Uh, Mr. Weiss, did you have a comment? or? Same exactly what I was going to mention. Okay. He, okay. Is there anyone else? Actually, I do. Yes, ma'am. My name is Linda Aiken, and it's 6281 Dillon Circle, and of course my chair doesn't want to move. <laughs> we always donated to the animal shelter, the fire department, the police department, the rec center, anything else, the library that they had for us to donate to. That's disappeared with Fathom. I've asked them, are y'all not collecting that money anymore? And they said, no, we don't do that. What's happened to that money? I mean, have y'all looked into why they're not collecting it from us? Do you want it's not on mine, and I've asked mm -hmm. them on it. Yes, ma'am, they're collecting it. They're not on mine. Mm, you, go ahead, Sonar. Hi. Um, I have asked Fathom to do an internal audit on that. Uh, I did have a couple people that their rates and their donations did not copy over when we transferred data. So not only did I have them do one study, I have them doing a second one because of, I didn't agree with what they came back with. And so trust me, the money is there. We've also been assured by Fathom that Jason will make any error whole from their part on any donations that may have been missed and they're going to do that by giving us that money directly so we are in the middle of an audit regarding those and i'm not going to settle with the numbers until i see what i need to see from them because i know what the numbers were in december yeah because they were they were telling me we don't do that when i've called them on the phone a couple of times and asked because we've done it ever since y'all set the program up and what, is, what are those funds being used for now? Are they covering some of this cost? Or is that projected cost without the funds that you collect? Those are different funds. This is the general fund. Those donation funds will go to the donation account. It's a different one. And we know that it's short. And uh, as Sedona has told you that, um, they will make good on those. So they are going to change the way that you know, when they discover how it's supposed to be working. And uh, I know that there are some um, donation that is not appearing in people's bill. That's, that's the reason why we are not receiving the donation, but they promise that they will make good on those. Okay, but what's half, what are y'all doing with the donation money? How are you spending it? Typically the donation, let's say it's the police donation fund as police chief, I would decide, I've got several different funds. I've got the general fund, the crime control prevention district, the donation fund, forfeiture fund. There's a lot of different funds as police chief I could pull from. The donation fund for the, is very small for these departments. So if you look up on there and you look at the amounts that we're talking about, most of those amounts would drain the donation fund of a, what, let's say it's parks or animal services or whatever, it would totally drain it. So what we try to save those donation funds is for one-time expenditures, um, more like Miss Nunn was talking about, a wish list. Our budget, we don't put things on our budget that are wish list. We put things on there that are completely responsive to what the council has given me as their strategic goals. But there are some times where the police chief may come and say, hey, I want to I want to put more money into the DARE program or the, do something for the SRO program that's not in the normal budget. And that's something that we would spend the donation funds on, if, for an example. Councilmember Watkins, did you have a comment or a question? Yes. <clears throat> the one that I can address the best is because my wife's name's all over it. Uh, the animal uh, fund is, uh, last I looked, 58000 Was that a Ms. Fung? I believe it's around 58,000. Uh, 
and that's just what he said. We, we, every now and then I go in and say, boy, it would be nice if we could buy this or that. And they say, well, you know, we're trying to get enough of it to, do, to buy something larger, but we don't pick it out of there and do anything else with it. That's money that's, that comes, it, it's a donation fund, and you don't, and, it, and we're not using it for anything that would be frivolous to one person, even if another person thought it was wonderful. But uh, the last time I looked, which was last month when, when we had a meeting, I believe that, that was that at 58? 59,000. Excuse me. We, we, we gained money while I wasn't looking. But uh, I had checked with Sedona because of, of my interest in that particular fund. And she said that uh, uh, that was one of the bookkeeping errors that, uh, that Fathom had and that the money was going it now there's i had i had two accounts and one of them they were taking it out and one they wasn't my building across the street i i don't remember either there or the at home they weren't taking it out but on the other one they were uh they assured us that that they would uh particularly the money that's going in what they haven't been able to do is to separate right separate it out properly it's all sitting here and they're trying to figure out i think they're trying to figure out exactly which fund to, to separate it out. But uh, the money that goes into that fund doesn't get used for any of this other stuff. Thank you, Councilman Boykins. Uh, yes, sir, did you wanna? Did, oh. <laughs> yes, ma'am, if you would just uh, say your name for the record, please. Uh, Stacy Corbin, 4505 Nadine. Thank y'all for having me up here. A Couple of real quick things I just wanted to touch on employment um, for the public works just curious what the criteria is for somebody to be hired and the reason I ask I know a lot of times you know there's no felonies this that and the other um, not that I'm saying we want a bunch of criminals working for the city I'm just saying it's a viable option you know maybe if somebody's been clean and been out 10 years they're out there struggling for work right now they would be grateful to have $13 an hour I know a lot of them you may not want them operating your heavy machinery but as far as grunt work you know, it might be something to think about. Just a, just a quick option. Also, Mr. Tron, um, I don't get to remodel my house. I don't get to buy a new car because I can't afford it. I would love to. I would love to. I know a lot of us would. But we don't always get to. We do have to work within a budget. We're given a certain budget, and that's what we have to work in. Doesn't mean we like it. Um, I don't think, and this is just my opinion, of course, pretty buildings aren't what bring businesses here. A strong community with a good economy is what brings businesses here. Businesses want to go where there's a good economy. <clears throat> Sorry, so nervous when I do this. <sighs> so bad at this. Um, also, budget tax increases. Quick question. Um, I suck at this. This is really hard for me. <laughs> so just out of curiosity, so when I have a budget, you know, I want to have a certain amount of things done. I don't always get to. Sometimes I have to pick and choose. Um, obviously, I'm a huge animal activist, love the idea of doing the shelter. What about instead of taking our money from our budget to do that, what about fundraisers, things like that? I know those already happen, those already go on. Maybe if we all got involved, publicize a little bit more. Same thing with the fire truck. Uh, currently, is it in the budget right now for maintenance? Is the maintenance on the current fire truck that we're wanting to replace, is that already budgeted in? And if so, that maintenance would be saved on buying the new truck so you're actually going to save money in that area of the budget if that makes sense so even though we're looking and we're seeing it's going to cost this much can actually subtract the amount of maintenance that you'll be saving by getting that new truck um, and then maybe we could you know see about doing a fundraiser to raise the remainder that would take two items off the list so we might not have to raise the budget or raise the tax rate quite so high you know, fire station one would like to be remodeled. So at the animal shelter, maybe we don't get to remodel both in the same year. Doesn't mean they both don't get to be remodeled. Maybe we just eat the elephant one bite at a time and do what we can afford to do without taxing your citizens into the poorhouse, if that makes sense. Anyway, thank you guys so much for listening. Have a great day. Thank you, Ms. Corbin. Yes, sir, if you would please just come up and state your name for the record. I'm Jim Moore. I live at 4917 Manila, and I think they left a description for y'all's job title out of the charter as mission almost impossible. <laughs> but I thank y'all for your time and your service. Uh, 
I'm retired, but I don't. I love to save money. I'm very conservative. My house has been paid for for 20 years. I haven't had a car payment in 30 years. But Trey Fowler told me something 10 or 12 years ago about a city. You know, I've lived here for 40 years, and you just see it going. He, he, he had it like a seesaw going down and down. At some point, which who knows where, it gets too far down and you can't pull it back. I'm not against spending money because I. we don't have good grocery stores here. We don't have good restaurants. We need to improve our city. If we let it just turn into crap, there's not going to be anything left. And I hate spending money, I mean throwing money away. But we got to take care of our city, and that's the workers, all the city workers. You know, they don't get a thank you all the time. But, uh, I mean, I'm still, I agree with you 100%, but somebody shouldn't pay more for water so I can get water cheap because I'm old. That's, that's not right. Why should you pay more than me? Because I'm 10 or 20 years older than you. That's not right. We're all equal. So let's keep our city going and uh, do what we can to not let it go down anymore. Thank you, Mr. Moore. Uh, is there anyone else in the audience wishing to speak regarding this agenda item? Again, this is agenda item number two. Yes, sir. Uh, yeah, it's a public meeting, so yeah. We have uh, five minutes. Five or six? Five. Five to. Okay. All right. I'll hurry. Um, start off with thank you, Mr. Moore, because you are correct about things deteriorating, and, and it's important that you do try to maintain. This council, over the last four years that I was involved with it, continued to maintain. Um, every year we increase taxes. You know, I was part of that. But there comes a point that you have to stop, and, and you know, uh, it's great that we're able to do that. You know, the, the, the uh, police and fire associations came to me four years ago, said they hadn't had raises in 10 years. You know, they asked me to run at that point to try to get it corrected. We were able to correct it as a council, as a collective body. They haven't gone a year without a, t without a raise. Uh, Public Works, I believe Mr. Van Noon Hughes, you were sitting there at the first budget meeting when you first got hired on was my first year. I told you we'd get to Public Works the second year and we went to work on it, did we not? Now there's still more work that needs to be done, but you know, if you wanna ask about, you, you know, we go out here in these budgets and we start throwing all these buzzwords out, how we can't do this and how we're, you know, we're cutting something. Ms. Thompson, I respectfully disagree. You're not cutting if you don't have it already. That's not a cut. That's something that's out there that you like to have, but you're not cutting it. Cutting's when you've already have something in place and then you do away with it. That's a cut. Um, you know, as far as we want to talk about raising taxes and doing those things, you know, you're fixing to get hit with a water rate increase. You're fixing to get hit with a 14% sewer increase. Uh, anyone that would like to debate me on this budget, I'd be more than happy to. You know, I can show you that you're, you're talking about a couple of weeks ago, y'all voted to pass bonds from 2010, which replaced 2.2 cents on our INS. So there's a 2.2 cent increase right there because our, our INS rate dropped. Y'all replaced it, which is fine. That, that's a choice that y'all made as a council. But it took 2.2 cents that we took all, away from the taxpayers already. So there's a 2.2% increase. Then we, took the, uh, then we took the proposed tax increase. There's another 5.3 cents. If we go to the, the current rate where we're at this year or, or close to it, that's another 5.3 cent increase. And not percent, but cents on the tax dollar. The EDC tax, y'all voted to terminate the EDC a couple of weeks, a week ago, last week. Is that correct? Okay. We, people want to forget the funding from that. That was a sales tax voted on initiative in 1995, and then it was voted by the voters in 2016, in May of 2016, to move it to the general fund and the street maintenance fund. Okay. Does anyone know how much that is on the tax rate? Do any of y'all know? 25.8 cents on the tax rate. 
So if we, and that money was put in there that's not that wasn't accounted for before. So we were able four Too years ago, four years ago to increase and and do these salary incentives and do this thing and correct this stuff without even having this 25.8 cents in. Just like Miss Nunn, thank you. We've gone up 30, 30 cents in the last 30 percent in the last five years. You know, there is a time that it stops. You know. The effective rate, there's nothing wrong with it. We can't always have everything. And I, I agree, there's times that you don't. But we're not even including the facts we had a 5% sales tax increase this year. 5%, we're saying nothing's going on, but yet you've got uh, Fuel City. You've got the mercantile property that's been fully developed on Beach Street. You've got stuff going on all over town that's starting to happen. Do you not, Mr. Phelps, along 820? So there are things going on. But there comes a point that you can give the taxpayers a little bit of a break. You know, we're not even counting the salary savings from 18 positions. That's just in public works that are open. You know, I want a couple of suggestions. Why don't you decrease the number of positions, make a cut, but yet increase the pay throughout public works if you want to do that. Um, that's a suggestion you can have. One other suggestion on the water is these people don't have a lot of confidence in staff or the council. I would recommend on that water issue getting some of these people that are leaders of this that have spent the time and done the homework and put them on a panel and let them be a part of the process. Let them help figure it out. Okay? Am I out of time? You got one minute. One minute. I'm going to get hauled off by SWAT this week. Uh, uh, so, you know, if, if, you're, if anyone wants to talk about this, they can talk about it, but you're talking about just the cumulative of the INS increase, the 2.2 cents, the EDC tax, and the tax increase that y'all are proposing is 33 cents on the tax rate 33 cents when, when do we get a break that's the thing when do we get a break you got 5.5 million dollars in that edc tax that immediately has gone to there that was not accounted for until 2016. it's just money that came in you know so at that point we're not counting that in the revenues here it just all of a sudden came in so Dr. Trong, yes, I, I, my newest vehicle is a 2008, and I haven't remodeled my home, and I need to. But you know what? My taxes in the last two years, cumulative in Halton City, have gone up $12,000. So it's a large increase. So all I'm asking is you all take that into consideration and just account for this, just account for what the people out here are doing. You've got everything else is increasing. There's nothing wrong with saying, you know what, we might need to, we might need to hold where we're at for a year or two. Time's up, Trey. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Councilman Fowler. Uh, Dr. Trong, did you have a question or a comment? I want to comment for Mr. Fowler. If he say the, uh, from work here until now, he never remodeled anything. If that's the case in America, where do you think America is going to? Everybody need to remodel, everybody need to improve, and the investment, you know. Uh, maybe, no ma'am, let, let I finish, and uh, I know my comment, maybe you don't like it. But the main thing, we can do a little bit. Fixing the window, somebody has a job. But right now, if everybody say, no, I'm not remodeling or anything, I don't want to buy a car, I bet you own the car lot will uh, be bang file bankruptcy, right, Ms. Fowler? Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Trung. Uh, is there anyone else in the audience? Yes, ma'am. If you would, please just come up here and state your name for the record, please. My name is Rebecca Weeks, and I live on Dunson Drive. I live on, uh, on a fixed income. I had a dollar eighty-six left over in my bank account last month waiting on my check. Where am I going to get the extra money to pay for all of these increases? And I'm not the only one in this boat. You can ask any senior citizen, any disabled person that lives on a fixed income, and there is no money. We get no raises. We get very little. It doesn't cover us. We have no cost of living increase, but yet we have to keep paying out, and it has to come from somewhere. I have nothing left. I'm down to medication and food. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, is there anyone else in the audience wishing to speak? If 
you would just uh, please state your name for the record. Yeah, I'm still Sandy Webb at 5005 Roundtree Court. Um, and I do want to correct something that I misspoke about last week. And that is my mother did not have eight bills in four months. She had one month that she did have two bills. And that was my mistake because she is 92 and she was um, dictating to me and got some of the billing dates and the pay dates wrong. So when I was able to view them, I saw that only one was that way. And I also want to thank Sedona and uh, whoever asked her to contact me because she has been, she was very kind, she was very concerned, and I felt that people are working to help this uh, in her situation anyway. I have not yet resolved all of this in my mind. There is still a severe problem that has not been answered. Um, and, you know, I, I drive down Pipeline and I see that fancy waterfall by Hearst. Uh, it looks real pretty if I get to sit at the red light, but it doesn't make me want to run over and join that city. And these, this, the comments, and perhaps you're doubly blessed. Perhaps you have more money than the most of us sitting in this room. But with, there are so many people like this last speaker. I deal with Medicare seniors, and we go into homes where people are having to either buy their medicine, pay their electric bill, buy their medicine, buy food, or, or uh, pay for their water. Now, water's become the issue. So the part about just, you know, what good is it to have a fancy city if nobody can afford to live in it? And we don't have the luxury, all of us, of being able to upgrade when we want to, fix what we want. I've had to let my uh, tree, tree trimmer, landscaper person not come to work because I told him I, he can't, I can't pay you because I have to pay my water bill. So, so that's an issue that just seems to keep resonating around here. As far as our first responders, our fire people, I, I love them. I love what they do. I honor them. I respect them. And my stepdad was a fire chief, fire captain for over 30 years. And he often expressed the desire to have more and better equipment, but he never asked for a better place to sleep. And I don't think that they should be deprived, but if their quarters are sufficient at this moment, as someone else stated, perhaps it can be uh, detained in that area. But um, the thing about, and we are an old city. We have a lot of, I'd like to know what are our statistics as far as seniors compared to all of these apparently more affluent cities that have younger families that move in and pay more taxes and buy more items. Perhaps we are overstocked in senior citizens and you're just gonna have to wait for us to die. You know, and then, you know, you can replenish with the young people that want to build buildings. But um, another thought on our, our police and, and, and so forth, when we spend all the money to train them, I don't know what the system is, but perhaps um, if, if they come into our city and they want the job, they have to sign a contract to, re, to uh, promise to stay here so many years after They've been, I don't know if that's legal. I don't know if it's possible, but it's another place to look so that they can't just get their training here and then run off and get someplace else. It's, um, and, and for the other gentlemen, yes, we are all God's children created equally, but we're not financially equal. And, and we all have our different problems, our different struggles, and we need to uh, take into account that some of us are extreme. I'm blessed with very good health but I do work four part-time jobs, and I'm an old lady, and I have to keep up with a lot of things, but that's so that I can continue to contribute and can not be a, a burden, but, but I think that's a, a, I'm particularly blessed in being able to do that because not all people can. So, um, the, and these new departments that are coming in over by the high school, I can't imagine how many people are gonna be there I, I have not heard, I certainly hope they're not low income, I don't know, but there should be tax revenue coming in that we haven't even counted on or anticipated yet. One, one minute, Ms. Ms. Webb. Okay, and um, I think really and truly, my, my biggest, it comes, all, all the, 
the fancy, I, I just admire this lady's mind that puts all this stuff together. But in, in my home, it's what comes in versus what goes out. And I find that at the end of the day, if I've taken in more than I've spent, then I'm in good shape. But if it goes the other way, I'm in trouble. And I think that has to be the way we all look at things because we can't understand all of the the big numbers and what it means because, but when I took the accounting classes, that was one of my big things with my, t my instructor. You know, it really is just in versus out. And all of this other stuff is just confusing. So I think that's one thing that helps people to understand if we know how to spend it or how to bring it in, then we can be better. We need to budget that like we have to struggle in our own homes. And I thank you for your time. <clears throat> Thank you, Ms. Webb. Uh, Mr. Phelps, did you have a comment? Yeah, I just I just wanted to pass on uh, some good news and maybe some hope here for the future uh, and just kind of uh, maybe inform uh, some information that people may not know. Well, first of all, you know, we do have a senior tax freeze here because we do care about our seniors very much. Plus, we do give a $50,000 discount off valuations for the formula of figuring out what the tax rate is. So we do care very much for our seniors, and I just want to make sure that I remind people of that. The other thing is, is that there is a lot of things going on as far as uh, our Avalorum tax base is getting, uh, is, is fixing to expand over the next few years. Uh, we've got uh, sales tax and things like that will be going up. Uh, we've got uh, uh, development going up on the north part of town, uh, right on north of 820. And, and by the way, that's a very high end apartment. Uh, the, uh, the price point's going to be very high, something that we've never experienced here. Well, that's true, but it'll be, you know, that's a number of years before those things get built and out of the ground, and then you have to have a good year or so before you start collecting those. Um, you know, we've got uh, a couple of Marriott hotels coming in. We've got uh, restaurants and other things, and those are things you're going to see over the next, next several years that are going to be coming up, but it does take a while to get them planned and out of the ground, and, and so probably more than ever in the history of Halton, uh, there's a lot happening. We just, we're working on a deal right now for a uh, Class A industrial park down on some land on Midway. Uh, we've we also worked on some uh, a development uh, uh, south of 820. So we got a lot of things happening. Now I just like to mention because um, uh, Councilman Nunn made a very good point that we have cities around us that, are, that have lowered property tax rates, and I happened to work for that city Keller for years, as did the city manager, and so we know that very well, and we're still well connected there. But what happened was is these cities. They lowered their tax rate when this development came up and then started uh, generating the revenue for the city. There's a time, and I'm telling you, it's coming pretty soon that, that we can legitimately look at lowering our tax rate. Uh, I just, I just want to caution us, uh, if you go to the effective tax rate, there's going to be cuts, and, and it's just that simple because things go up, the cost of medical, the cost of everything else. It's not just them not getting raises. So uh, I just want to be careful about that and understand that there is a legitimate time that you to raise, to, I mean, to lower tax rates. And that, that time is coming for us. I just wanted to put out a little hope there so that people know that a lot's going on in this city. So we're working hard every day to make that happen. And I know the council is too, so I just wanted to pass that on. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Phelps. Is there anyone else in the audience wishing to speak regarding uh, this agenda item? Uh, yes, sir. Welcome. Hello. I'm Randy Hayfley, Component Construction down on Airport Freeway. Uh, we've been in Northeast Tarrant County since 1970 and Haltham City since 1972. And we suffer with the same thing that uh, Greg does. We are in a difficult economy right now. It is very difficult at any price to keep your health. We operate in other states too, and I can tell you Dallas-Fort Worth is probably the worst for that, but it is nationwide in the other states that, that we operate in also. But what I'd like to speak to tonight, I'm not critical of the budget. I don't know all the nuances of it. I don't know what's in it, but this I know. I'm a developer. We own 10 properties in Haltham City and I guess three or four undeveloped tracks. We probably collectively pay a half a million dollars a year in school taxes, county taxes, 
Waltham City taxes. I had my people get, I've uh, been watching for Waltham City to publish the tax rate. I didn't see it, I guess, until Friday, and I could not find it on the website. But as a developer, many of our properties for larger tenants are leased on a triple net basis. That means the tenants have to pay their pro rata share of taxes, insurance, and CAM operating costs. We're at a competitive disadvantage with the Haltham City tax rates when they're compared to other cities. For example, uh, looking up the rate that I just saw published, was 0.689261. Colleyville is 0 0.320800. That's 114, almost 115 percent lower than Haltham City. I'm not sure what it is that we're supposed to say to a company coming in from out of town when they're looking at that rate compared uh, to others. Uh, Richardson's 10% under Haltham City. I mean, the list goes on and on. I didn't have a lot of time to get that together, and it's you have to be sure that you see every night's paper these days to, in order to, to clip those out. But I've got no gripes with the console. I've got no gripes. The greatest thing that ever happened as a developer here was when a uh, city engineer came back to work in, in Haltham City. Uh, we needed people like that. We have that. I know he has issues keeping help. We do too, but um, you know, I'm kind of with the, what the one lady said about the people dying off here, there are only two things sure in life. I'm told one's death, the other's taxes. We really can't do anything about death, but maybe we could do just a little bit about the tax rate. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Hayfley. Is there anyone else in the audience wishing to speak? Yes, sir. If you would just please come up and uh, state your name for the record. My name is Ronald Akins. I live at 5281 Dillon Circle. And uh, I'd just like to say that as a disabled person, it's hard to be to get around from place to place. I have depend on my wife to drive me from place to place. Alton City has no public transit. And there's, from what I can tell, there's no plans of us joining the area of rapid transit or the uh, public transit. There's no plans or money to do that. Um, a lot of us are desperate, and uh, as the population ages, it's going to get more and more desperate for public transportation. We have to look at that. Somebody has to look at that and say, hey, we've got to get public transport. Thank you. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Again, this is agenda item number two, and we are still in a public meeting, is there anyone else wishing to speak regarding this agenda item? Yes, ma'am. <clears throat> My name is Paula Lindsay. Um, just a, a question. In this uh, tax rate that they're wanting, is that including it, the the hiring of the the 18 people that we don't have if, or that they would be getting it's not it is including it it is including it okay so yeah so it is already budgeted <clears throat> if that's the case then why do we not have some sort of a job fair why do we not have um, and you said something I missed none about um, the people the, about the money as far as raises go you know, if you do not take care of your employees, you're not going to have much of a job. You're not going to have, I mean, you're not going to have, you know, people aren't going to care. 
you know, you take care of them first, then they'll take care of your city. And I don't know what the happy medium is actually on the taxes, but I'm like, we do need to have to make our city look better. But there are times when you can ask your city people to come out and we can do things. You know, we can work to make the grounds better. You know, we don't have to just have it in our budget. You know, we can have work days to do that. It doesn't just have to be, you know, something that we're budgeted for. And to understand, you know, you want to take care of your, your uh, residents to make sure no one gets hurt, you know, know the liabilities of it all. You know, I have a business myself, and, you know, but the first thing I do is I make sure my employees are taken care of. If my employees are not taken care of and paid well, they're going to run next door and go to somewhere else. So you have to make sure somewhere that we are comparable to someone else. If someone just on the street two miles pays a whole lot more than we do, then sure, I'm going to go down there. And I also agree on if we're going to pay to have someone to, to pay for, I uh, forgot the word, pay to, pay to train them, pay for training, then there needs to be something put in whatever kind of contracts, they don't know if we have that or not in place, that they can't. A lot of businesses do, and cities do do that. Uh, if they're, you know, and I can't tell you exactly which ones it is. But, you know, everyone's getting uh, upset. You've got very angry residents in our city right now not just for taxes, for the water, and I think this is supposed to be just taxes only, right? Okay, and I know everyone's talking about other things besides taxes, uh, so I won't get into that one. But my main thing is, you know, we've got to take care of the employees. And if we have to go up just a little bit on taxes, if it's just to make sure we've got employees to make our city better, to want people to come here, because otherwise, you know, they're not. Halton City's getting talked down right now. It's getting talked down very badly, and not and it's in sometimes it's the council, sometimes it's the residents. This stuff is put on public, you know, s social media for people to see, and they're sitting here and they're we're getting laughed at, and it's really not a funny thing when you live in the city. You see five or ten houses in your neighborhood go up for sale. People coming in from Colleyville, coming in from Keller, they move here to get better rates. Not, we have some not very nice homes here. And then their water and their taxes are worse than where they came from. That's a big deal. That's a big deal. And it may not seem to some people, but when you hear it all the time, and when you have people who are scared to come up here and talk to the council that are in their 80s and 90s, and they call you about it and, and ask you to speak for them, and I'm not the greatest speaker in the world, that's just fine. But what do you expect them to do? You know, and as far as us not having the fire trucks, and just like it was brought up a while ago, maybe we can't do everything in one year. Maybe we do do, we, we dilly it out however you want to do it, you know, as far as that goes. As far as the tax, I think, you know, just like you said, if we don't raise something, economy goes up every day. So there's got to be something somewhere, but there's got to be a happy medium. And just to jump in with a big number, that, that's a lot. That's a, lot of, that's a lot for senior citizens, a lot for people who are on um, fixed income. That's a lot of people who are single parents who raise their children, or raising their children. And, you know, so as far as the taxing goes, you know, I don't understand all these numbers, uh, and so I may be just not even speaking right here, but as far as bringing it up that high, you know, and then bringing in a third party to look at the different things that we're doing, as far as bringing in someone, uh, third party for, uh, for hiring, and that that wouldn't that hit this tax budget? You have one minute, Ms. Lindsay. Okay. So, anyway, and and there's money there. The third party that we just voted on to come in for this fathom, where that where's that money coming from? You know. So that that's my question. And if you know, but I think a nine percent tax rate is high. And now, of course, they don't know. I don't understand how that exactly works. But you know, I think that. There's other ways that we can flip-flop this budget just a little bit and get the citizens involved, too. We're not being involved in what, you know, we have elected you guys, which I have no problem with anyone. It's just, you know, somewhere there's got to be a happy medium to get our city happy again. That sounds a little bit crazy, but, you know, people are angry. And there's, you know, the taxes want to go up now. You know, they're going to make it. It's going to be worse. So, and, and <laughs> just... Have, a, have, a, have a, a play day where everybody comes out and helps make whatever you think that the city needs to be made better to cut maybe a little bit of that budget down. Cut them or a little bit of that out. You know, that way we can have a nicer city. But there's a lot of people who are willing to come out and do that. 
there are a lot of businesses who are willing to come out and do that. And we have a lot of businesses who do these kind of things that are on there that are bonded that can do it. So, you know, that's just, you know, if, just, that's all, I guess. <laughs> Thank you, Miss Lindsay. Is there anyone else wishing to speak regarding this agenda item? Councilman Watkins, did you have a question or a comment? Yeah, both. <clears throat> uh, as far as the uh, volunteers and the people doing all that, that's something that I've been trying to push for years. And as it turns out, of course, I, as I mentioned a while ago, I've got a a lot of interest in the animal shelter, but uh, we couldn't uh, use volunteers down there because they had to be trained and everything, which didn't surprise me because I started thinking about the fact that we have drugs and, and other things down there. But then I found out that you it, it, it's hard to, you can't hardly let uh, volunteers work at the library because you, you're you're handling information on what people are reading, and, it, and it's just, and ever, at every turn, when I thought, well, surely we can get volunteers, I'll go down there and help. No, not, <laughs> it, that's not, that's not happening. But I agree with Ms. Webb. Uh, I told Jack Lewis this, this years ago, I'm looking around, he may be the only one here older than me, uh, so I gotta keep him on his feet. Well, you're you're older than I am, and you're older than dirt. But uh, that was the that was the thought back there when the senior tax freeze. They thought surely all us old folks is going to die, and some of us didn't. Uh, but I I just thought I'd address that volunteer thing because I I I pushed for that forever, and every time I at every turn, well no you can't use a volunteer for that, no you can't use a volunteer for that, and then again even if you and, and in fundraisers, uh, the the, the uh, clear the shelter thing the other day was letting letting that, letting them have animals for nothing. But even when we have uh, something down there for donations, it goes in the donation fund. Now uh, there's 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 things we can do, and there's, it, it it takes a lot. There's a lot more to it than it appears. I've discovered. Thank you. Thank you, Councilmember Watkins. Uh, Councilmember Nunn. Thank you. Um, I still don't remember what I was going to say before I got the ink all over me. However, I found a couple new things to talk about. Um, we did just EDC just um, sold some property, and that's for three point seven five million, somewhere around there. Okay, so that goes into, those funds would go into general fund, correct? One's going to take a year, so it's the 34 acres will take a year and a half. Oh, a year and a half, I yeah. didn't know the time. Okay, correct. the 34 okay. acres will take about a year to a year and a half to mm -hmm. get closed. The 42 acres, um, probably 90 days, maybe, maybe, ballparkish. Okay. And, and so we're probably going to have to set aside about $2 million of that into escrow because of the lawsuit. So, okay, so that's got, okay. yeah, well, that's EDC history. Right. Okay. Um, so anyway, so we do have that coming. So uh, we're planning to sell all the city properties, correct? That would be the goal. Yeah. The goal is. Sell so, it. Yeah, to sell it. <coughs> so those monies would go into general fund. Um, we also, I, I just read and I, I wanted to go to the uh, Birdville, the BISD thing on Tuesday, but I wasn't able to go. Um, they're looking at a $250 million bond proposal, is that correct? That would affect everybody. It wouldn't affect me. wouldn't affect some of us, but it would affect you guys. If it's passed, has to be approved, has to be passed. Um, so, you know, we need to keep that into consideration, too. And also, how are we, Ms. Fung, on our, on our retirement pensions? Um, is, are we under control on that? I mean, Fort Worth is having problems with that. Dallas is... Severe problems with that. We're we're okay. Yeah, if it's Richie on Morass, we're not then. Okay. Okay, so that makes a difference. Y'all y'all are fine if you tell me. We're we're in we're in great shape. I I just don't want to. You know, I know that other cities can have 
Okay. okay. All right. Some cities have uh, a private retirement system, and it's not TMRS. Haltom City is one of over 800 cities that are in the Texas Municipal Retirement System. I think our funding, uh, certainly the outlook for TMRS is good, and our funding is in the upper 80s, I believe, is the last number that I saw. That everything, Miss Miss Nunn. Okay. Uh, Councilmember Thompson. Thank you. I just wanted to say yes. These items, uh, the land has potentially been sold. There's no official contract, so uh, you can't count on money that you don't know that you are going to get. We're anticipating, but we do not have the money in hand. So I'm leery to think that that would be included in our budget in any way because those funds have not actually been received, nor has the contract been signed or executed. Councilmember Watkins. And I don't disagree with that, but that's a two-sided coin. Uh, we can't depend on it being there to raise it or to lower it. It's, that's, you, you, you can't just jump out there and say, well, we're not, we're not for sure because uh, two years ago, two years ago, maybe three, but, but for sure two years ago, we were talking about all the things that were going to happen up north of, up by my house, and uh, some of them happen, some of them don't, but one of the bigger things that I, I pass every morning on the way in is uh, the property up there that Barnes is building those homes. But we don't get him, we don't, we, the previous council was in all of their radiant glory, did, did managed to give away the taxes for some eight or 10 years. Well, we, there's a board been formed and I'm the chair of it, we haven't met yet. But there's, but there's, you, I'm agreeing with you on one, on one side of the corner, but on the other side of the corner, I'm saying it's, it's, it works both ways. We can't depend on that and say, okay, we need to hire a bunch of people, or we need to train this, that, and the other. Uh, although I voted for the, both sides of the bond issue last, last, when we had the election, I voted on it with the knowledge that we didn't necessarily have to build it that day. I thought that, as you're saying, I thought that, well, we need to prepare prepare for, for uh, the fact that it takes certain employees at certain lengths of time. Uh, so I agree with it from that standpoint. But also, had we jumped out there and bet on the come two or three years ago, we'd be in big trouble now. We'd have a bunch of trained uh, police, fire, public works. We'd have all these trained people, but there wouldn't have been anything for them to do. So it's, 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 a, it's a fine line, and last year, I hit in the middle, and I'm pretty well hitting in the middle this year. I, as it turns out, instead of having making anybody happy, what I'm going to have is 50% of the people on both sides. Are not, you know, so I, I've got to sit, I've got to do like Janine thinks where she's at, and I'm thinking where I'm at. I, I think someplace in the middle instead of what was the uh, what was the effective rate last year? Was it 63 something? The best of my memory is 0.63 something. Yeah. Ms. Fong has that number. While she's looking that up, I just wanted to kind of uh, answer maybe or help answer some questions that we just had on that. I want everybody in the room to please, you know, uh, you should be excited about the uh, development that we got coming because it's going to it's going to widen the ad valorem tax base, and so that's good for us. The the capital. Uh, uh, I guess shot in the arm that you get off the sale of the property. It's it's the ongoing revenue that it brings more than that. Um, and you you know it's probably ill advised to use those funds for recurring costs like personnel. But but there's other uh, things too. I mean you know we you, when you get a capital in, input you also have uh, debt. You know like for example we, you know we do have uh, economic development you know debt and things like that too that that will help set. So it's not just Sometimes you just can't take that and just pour it into a decision package, for example. And sometimes you can, but not for reoccurring costs. I just wanted, I know that you understand that and council does. I just, for the benefit of the audience, I wanted to uh, explain that. But I do, I, I, regardless of the one-shot capital, when we sell it, it's, it's the growth and the, and, the, and the widening that Avalorum tax base that is so important because 
that also sparks economic development and businesses want to come in and then then we have sales tax so we're getting to where everybody wants to be i just want to keep saying it there's a lot of hope here and uh, it's not just hope it's it's going to happen so we are moving in the right direction it's just between here and there what are we going to do okay so thank you The effective tax rate is in, um, last year is 0.638174. 8174. That's for uh, fiscal year 2018. Yeah, well, that's, <clears throat> that's kind of where I'm at. Uh, Ms. Ms. Nunn and I have discussed this. Matter of fact, I think we discussed it a little today. I don't. I'm. Uh, I'm with the people that at, at, at 81. I'm had my taxes frozen a real long time ago, but my taxes are not frozen across the street. And uh, so, if the taxes go up, it's gonna it's gonna cost me, whereas it won't cost some other people. Uh, I think that may be it. I may shut up. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Uh, Councilmember Nunn, did you have a question or a comment? And then, no. no? Uh, Councilmember Grove, did you have a question or a comment? No, um, uh, Mr. Phelps covered it. Okay. Thank you. Okay, before we close the public hearing, is there anyone else? Mr. Fowler, did you have a. We've had one question. Come up. Do, you mind, do you mind coming up here? Thank you. Could you clarify, though, Mr. Phelps, the project that's going on the, on the north of 820 by the high school, is that not under a TIF, which we won't experience Terse. tax? Terse. Terse. Terse, I'm sorry. Ten years. Okay, so and those so those properties, that and the apartment complex, are both part of the TERS? So we're not going to experience any tax revenue from those, really, because we're going to give it back to the developer for 10 years well for the public infrastructure yes what i was referring to is the other development coming like the marriott's and okay the, uh, the, the other development we got coming on the 43 acres and down on the midway that's what i was talking about so i can't hardly speak on that before me i just know that that's that happened i'm just talking about from the development that we got coming on in the, in the next few years okay well i just i mean i wanted to make sure we clarify though because we're not going to experience tax revenue really from any of that um, in the near future, and that's the most current development that we have under progress. It's probably going to be that we'll see and feel at the earliest point. Is that correct? I don't think you can vote on anything. It's a, it's a, it's a legal requirement to follow the contract with them. And, and, and what Mr. F or Mr. Fowler just explained is correct, and that's why I said that we're not quite there yet but they were getting there. And, and so it's going to be a few years when these, these new developments come out of the ground. So, yeah, so we're, we're in agreement. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, is there anyone else? Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. if, if you would, please. Sandy Webb again. Since you're selling these public properties, then that means we don't have to water them anymore, right? Uh, those were never watered. <laughs> They're not watered? No, they're vacant tax What like what about the one next door to the library? Is that is that for is that public You mean across the street from the library? Yeah, that one, but then a lot is there's a lot of there's a lot of greenery around in that area. Right, acro railroad track, I think, is right across across the street from the library is the tract of land they're referring to. That never was watered and also the one down on Midway, that was just a large tract of land which never was watered. Because my suggestion, the thought came to me, you know, there's a lot of native plants and rocks and gravel that don't require a lot of water. So for any kind of landscaping that we did, we could substitute those kinds of things in place of grass. And that would save a lot of money in that area, both for the city and for us. So thank you for that answer. Something to think about. Thank you. Uh, yes, sir, Mr. Moore. Just a real quick comment. Mm -hmm. If I live my life like the city is run and the federal government is run, I'd been in bankruptcy court 25 years ago. Yeah. And I don't, I said something to Tom Muir a long, long time ago and he just kind of laughed. Has anybody ever considered paying off debt? Because 
The borrower is slave to the lender, and I don't like being a slave. And we, all we talk about is borrowing more money, and the people that buy bonds, the investors, they make money off our city and off of my taxes. Well, what the heck are we doing that for? Why don't we pay off our debt and get out of debt, and if we want a fire truck, write a check for it. But it might take 20 years. It won't happen before I die. But maybe for my kids and my grandkids, they wouldn't be working their butt off for some investor up in New York City. Mr. Moore, I'll answer your question. The debt that we're issuing um, from 2010 to 2018 is voter-approved debt. So in other words, there were bond proposals that the voters voted on. Well, I understand. Right. So, I mean, but most right. people don't. That This is like sp spitting in the wind. Let <laughs> me rephrase right. that. And it's, you know, Most that, people don't that, think like that, but... That gives the voters a choice. You know, do you want to replace a fire station? The voters tell us, yes, that's $5.5 million that the voters approved. So it's not the city council or city staff doing it. It's the voters telling us, we want you to issue this debt to do this. And so that's how that debt comes about, if that makes That's sense. all they understand. They don't even know there's another option out there to, to live. I don't understand. We... The, the wording on, lives in debt. Everybody the wording on the bond debt. proposals has to be very specific. You have yeah. to basically inform the voter, this is how much it's going to cost. This is the Im potential impact on your tax rate. You, we have to tell the voter all that. So there's no well, give us five and a half million dollars and we're not going to tell you how much. Sell that what piece of property and pay for the, the new station. Make four or five million off the property, write That's a check. And pay at for the, a new station. At the time that the bond proposal was out there, we we didn't have a we weren't selling a piece of property at that time. So I'm just telling you the debt that we've the last debt that we've issued and the debt we're going to issue next year is bond proposal debt. It's voter approved. Because of y'all's recommendation, I'm just saying I'm just trying to plant a seed, and maybe in the next 40 years it could get watered every year by somebody and get out of debt. That's not good. I mean, our country will never, never, never dig out of this crap. We'll never get out. And what's going to happen? We're going to be like Argentina one day? <laughs> I totally agree with um, what he said. And in fact, the cities, the way that it runs is that we have barely have enough to do anything. So that's why when we have to do some project, we have to borrow the money. However, there are better ways to do it. I always recommend that. And I manage my own finance that way, the same thing. I pay off my house in 2002, long, long time ago. And what happened is that this city, if we have a tiny little bit more money, they will reduce the tax rate. Instead of saving the money for projects, and I really think that the cities, the way that it's run right now, because the way that the city council do not see the future, they want to only look at the present. If we were keep the tax rate the same, last year instead of reducing the three cents, we will have about a million dollars extra. And those, you can put it aside, like a building maintenance fund, I mean a building construction fund as a reserve. So in a few years, you will have enough money to build the things that you want. Instead of just reducing a few cents of tax and run the city to the bare minimum all the time. And I think that the city has been doing it wrong all these years. And I've been here for only three years. And I really wish that I would be here longer to keep the finance much, much better. Because the way that you run, the way that I run thing is that I treat the city money as my money. And I try to make it as good as possible. But the way that I see what the council did, I do not agree with sometimes, you know, but there are better ways to do things. We should have a building construction fund, save the money so that instead of running it to the bottom, bottom of everything. Save the money, and then you will have a few years, you will have enough money to build facilities instead of borrowing. And I would really recommend that we borrow as less as possible, but for some of the projects we need to put on the ground, 
right now, like the fire station, we really need it. So that's why the, the citizen vote for it as well. And as for City Hall, I heard about the City Hall supposed to be built, you know, 10 years ago, but what happened? There's no plan of actually building it. You should have saved the money, just put one cent or two cents, you know, off the property tax and put it aside. Few more years, you'll be have the min money to build it instead of borrowing it. And I think that borrowing money is not a good way for the city to run. And I preferred, okay, to keep the tax rate or keep it down a little bit, you know, because that's what we want. But we should save the money for the future use instead of borrowing money. I totally agree that we shouldn't borrow money anyway. But for immediate projects, because we need it, because you haven't had a good planning for all these years, and that's the reason why we have to borrow. So a better planning is to put aside the money so that you will have the money to build the city hall. So that's my two cents here. Sure thing. After that, we're going to wrap up the public meeting after that, yes. I'll make it real quick. Um, I just had a real quick question um, for Mr. Phelps. I think I got the name right. Um, we were talking about the money from the EDC and the sale and how that money is not really available to use towards big projects because we have so much debt. We need to use that money to pay down on some debt, correct? Okay, my question is, right now, are we budgeted to already, is that in our budget, to continue paying on those debts? So one thing I'd like to point out is if we have that money from the EDC, whether it's from the sale of just one portion, which will happen hopefully in 90 days, or whether the, it's the sale that'll happen in a year and a half, that money will go down to pay towards debt. So the money we're currently paying towards debt will actually be available to do other things. Does that make sense? So we're not gonna use that to pay down debt. You know, whatever we're using that towards debt, that's money it'll save the budget, it seems like, on what y'all are currently paying towards that debt. I don't know if that makes sense. So anyway, all right, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, yeah if, you, if you don't mind speaking. Well, you know, that. that's, that's certainly something we'll look at, but, but you have to restructure that debt sometimes because, you know, these are long-term payments and they're all set up and that rate set up. So, you know, you, you pay it so it's paid down quicker but you have to restructure it to realize that savings. And so that's not necessarily so easy to do all the time. And that takes, uh, you know, that's, you have to redo a tax rate then by then to do that. So yeah, I do appreciate that. And the only other thing I got to say, I just have to say this because I'm with you about, I hate it when people try to lump the local municipal government with federal government. <laughs> I just, you know, it's hard for me to accept that I've been doing this for 30 something years now. And, and I can tell you that you see what you spend your money on here because whether you use all of it or not, you get 24-hour police service equipment uh, and tr uh, training and all the mandated. You get uh, fire department, fire trucks. And we know how expensive that is, right? That's all the way around the clock. If you need them, they're there for a medical emergency. You get roads. Uh, they're not always the best, but you still get roads, right? And you get library. You get uh, a finance department. You have to have administration. Uh, you get planning and zoning and public works to make sure that something's built, it's not going to flood your property or cause an adverse effect on you. You get all of that, and I still haven't even had half of it for about what most people pay for internet and satellite TV. There's no private company that can do what your local government does for you. So I just want to make sure that everybody understands that. You get a lot for your money. It's just that we don't see that sometimes or don't realize that sometimes. And I just want you to know that this staff and this council are here for you, and we care for you very much, but uh, there's a lot of value in a dollar for that tax money. I just want to say that. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Phelps. And with that being said, I'll now close the public hearing at, what is it, 917, and bring it back to the council for any additional questions or comments before we uh, call for a motion. Okay, there's no vote. Okay, you're right. Okay, so that's next week. That's next week. My mistake. Okay, so with that being said, uh, are there any additional questions or comments from the council? Seeing none, we'll now adjourn at 920.